Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Game & Watch Donkey Kong 2. Donkey Kong 2 was the fifth game in the Game & Watch multi-screen series, and as you might expect, it stars Donkey Kong Jr., like the arcade game it is based on. Wait a second, something is strange here. Didn't we already go over a Game & Watch game that was based on Donkey Kong Jr.? On that note, why is this called Donkey Kong 2? The sequel to Donkey Kong was called Donkey Kong Jr., not Donkey Kong 2. The story and setting here are exactly the same as Donkey Kong Jr., so it appears that Nintendo decided to make another Game & Watch variant based on the arcade game, but this time for the multi-screen series instead of the new widescreen series. I have no idea why they called it Donkey Kong 2, but due to the fact that it is the only Donkey Kong game with this title, I like to joke that it's the true sequel to Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong Jr. was just a spin-off. The most obvious difference between this one and the widescreen version is that it uses two screens instead of one, resulting in a much larger stage. Another big difference, though, is that the level design of the stages are completely different. The stage in the widescreen version seemed to be largely based on the first level of the arcade game, while the stage in this version is a combination of levels 3 and 4. As stated before, this is essentially just another reimagining of Donkey Kong Jr. Instead of being stuck in a cage, Donkey Kong's arms and legs are chained up. Mario doesn't look quite as silly as he did in Game & Watch Donkey Kong Jr., but he still just stands there and stares forward blankly. In this one, the primary objective is to bring a key from the bottom to the top and unlock each of the chains around Donkey Kong. At the start, the key is hanging on the bottom screen. To move the key up, you have to jump beneath the key. Doing so will bump it up to the next screen. You can actually keep navigating the stage without doing this. And every now and then, I forgot and just kept going without tossing it up. After throwing the key, you have to navigate your way up the bottom screen. The first obstacles are the snap jaws. All you have to do is jump over them. But you also have to be careful not to jump into the sparks above you. Speaking of, the sparks from Stage 3 in Donkey Kong Jr. return, and you have to climb across the wire while dodging them. The sparks move at a different rate above and below you, so you have to be careful with your timing to not accidentally get shocked from above whenever you make a jump. Once you get to the second screen, you have to jump up to bump up the key again. Doing so will move it to one of the four slots. This part of the stage is somewhat similar to the final stage of Donkey Kong Jr. You have to climb up the chains while avoiding birds flying back and forth. This can get pretty crowded, and you aren't completely safe even after unlocking one of the chains, so you need to move carefully here. Once you unlock a part of the cage, the next key appears back at the bottom, and you have to make the trek once again. What makes this one particularly tough, though, is that you aren't sent back to the start like in the new widescreen version. You have to make the whole trip back down every time you unlock one of the chains. Fortunately, it's a bit easier, since you are generally moving along with the obstacles rather than moving against them. Once you unlock all four chains, Donkey Kong is free and runs off to the side. Junior catches him, and for some reason, Donkey Kong is laying on his side during this animation. However, this freedom doesn't last long, as Donkey Kong is suddenly trapped again, and you are back to square one. The points in this one work pretty similar to the new widescreen version. You earn a single point for every obstacle you jump over, but the big points come when you unlock the chains. You gain a bunch of points for each chain unlocked, and you gain even more every time you free Donkey Kong. Generally, I found by the time I rescued Donkey Kong, I would often have around 100 points. Once again, my initial goal for these games was just to rescue Donkey Kong. On my first run, I had no idea how the hitboxes and everything worked, so I played pretty cautiously. Because of this, I managed to rescue Donkey Kong on my first attempt, and I only lost one life up until that point. I lost my remaining two lives pretty quickly though, and ended the run with 120 points. I learned a couple of key things on this run. Jumping to hit the first key wasn't a completely safe maneuver, as you can still get hit by the sparks when you make the jump. Additionally, I learned that you weren't safe from the sparks when you were hanging on the vines on the bottom right. After saving Donkey Kong in Game Mode A, I moved on to Game Mode B. This is where I started to run into problems. This mode threw a lot more enemies at you, and you pretty much had to make some close calls to make it to the top. Since I didn't totally understand the timing of everything yet, I lost my last life after only unlocking two of Donkey Kong's chains. This game is all about understanding the rhythm of the enemy movements, and knowing what's safe and what isn't. Generally speaking, you only take damage when an enemy moves from one position to another. If they aren't moving, you can stand right next to an enemy, as long as you move away quick enough. However, if you don't understand the timing, it can be pretty easy to accidentally move in front of an enemy right when they are about to move. It took me a few tries, but I eventually managed to rescue Donkey Kong in Game Mode B. I got to 122 points before I ran straight into the jaws of a Snapjaw and ended my run. Similar to the other Donkey Kong-based Game & Watch games, I returned to this one to earn 300 points in each game mode. If you watched my video on the new widescreen version of Donkey Kong Jr., I said that one was one of the hardest Game & Watch games yet, and honestly, this one is too. They throw so many enemies at you, and losing a life right when you're about to unlock a chain can be pretty painful. Eventually though, something fine and clicked, and I managed to get to 300 points without losing a single life. I think I entered double score mode, 
but I didn't care at this point to go any further and intentionally ended the run here. Next up was getting 300 points in game mode B. This one didn't actually take me as long, as I got to 300 points on my second try. The final run here was a lot closer though, as I had no lives remaining once I made it to 300 points. Interestingly, you only gain one life back instead of both of them, which would make this one even more brutal if you wanted to go for a really high score. Anyway, I once again ended the run at 300 points, and the game was complete. On to the review. If you saw my review of the first Game & Watch Donkey Kong Jr., you might recall that one of my requests was to utilize the multi-screen in order to make a larger stage. This game delivers well on that request, as the stage is far more complicated this time around. That being said, I think I would have preferred if the game reset you back to the bottom of the stage after unlocking each chain, as making the whole trek back and forth each time made the game feel a bit slower paced. I still enjoyed my time with it, although once again it didn't take me too long to lose interest, resulting in another score of 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video! If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it'll help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.